and because this King Cal thing. 21 years old, and I was playing my first gig at CBGB's. Do you know what that is? Yes. You know what it is? Yeah. yeah. Please, God, tell me you do. So, um, way past when it was really special. <laughs> Richard knows it when it was special. I, 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 I was there when it was on its way down. But it's still special to me because it was the place where all the bands that I was in love with, you know, uh, and even the ones I hated made it. You know, it was a place you went to, and when you walked into it, you went, oh, dear God, this is what they said CBGB's was. It's about this. No, not much wider than this room and really not much longer. Uh, a, a bathroom that looks a lot like the bathroom here, just a little bit bigger, but actually... A we clean ours. Right. Down at CBGB's, the, the best cleaning you'd get in their bathroom was you walking through it and whatever you took out on your shoes or on your body, that's how they cleaned it. But I remember uh, playing my first gig there, and you want to talk about everything that could possibly go wrong for a gig. My band actually broke up at that gig. <laughs> and not only did my band break up at that gig, we found out that we were losing our drummer to another band at that gig. And at that same gig, I found out how my, my bandmates actually felt about me uh, behind the scenes, and I thought that that they actually like liked me. I found out how they really felt about me. I built myself a microphone stand. This is funny, trust me. I built myself a microphone stand out of an old, um, uh, I think you put your hats on, what is it called? Hat, hat rack. A hat rack. Took the top of the hat rack, put, screw, put the little screw thing on there. So I had this wooden microphone stand with like four legs coming down from it. It was the scariest looking thing. I could stick it out at the audience. I was, it was, I was, I was so proud of myself. And I put like things on it. I was, I was very much in my, um, my. I wish I was as cool as Aerosmith days before I knew that they weren't necessarily that cool. But I like Steve Tyler because he's a front man and he's still doing it. So I made this thing. I had some rags on it. I was all into it. I get to the end of the gig, which is a horrific gig. I'm not going to get into all the things that happened. We played our show. Felt a little dejected because just some crazy things that happened on the way up to it. I break the mic stand on stage. To I can't cold. believe that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it that time, though. It was made out of wood. I plan was to plan was to break it. When I broke the mic stand, I could see the bottom of it. And what my lead guitarist and my rhythm guitarist had done is they had written down all the most evil and horrible things they could ever write about me on the bottom of this mic stand. He thinks he's this. He's a piece of shit. He's a jerk. Blah, 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 blah. All these things that I would have never thought would have come. Like when you're friends and you say things to each other and you're, you're being a jerk, you know, that's part of the, the, the dozens. It's part of like saying things to each other. But this was like straight out malicious. They were mad at me for making my own mic stand. Everybody else, I'm a singer. I do not play guitar. I do not play my clarinet on stage. I come out, I'm a front man, and I sing. And I have no problem with anyone who picks up a guitar. In fact, I love anyone who has a guitar. In fact, I've forced the point upon other people in my household to make sure that they can play an instrument so they would never be holding, like I was, to having someone play an instrument for them. That's why I play guitar. There it is. I got tired of dealing with guitar players. And I will tell you that after that experience, I should have been picking up the guitar. Because what it really proved to me was I did not know what was really going on. But a lot of the stuff they wrote on the bottom would have been great lyrics. Um, the reason I tell you this story is, is not for any other reason than the whole King Cal thing was written on the bottom there, too. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, okay. why, that's why it always yeah. kind of... It's always said with reverence. You can say it, and I don't, I don't... But there was a reason why that even came up. I will admit the fact that if I like something a certain way, that I will let you know it. And if I don't like it, I will let you know it. And I have no problem doing it. That's why my current job is I'm a director and a leader of things. I direct things. I make sure things look the way they're supposed to look and sound the way they're supposed to sound. That's my job. And for some people, that can make a mad if you're that kind of person, if you definitively know what you want. You've been dealing with people who know what they want. You're becoming people who know what you want. Right? How many of you consider yourselves to be writers? Because I'm not worried about right now about the, the guitarists and the piano players and stuff like that. You know, we can do that. But a writer of lyrics. Writer of lyrics. 
Really? I do. I know you do. Yeah. Okay. Where do your lyrics come from? Anyone? I'm just not rhetorical. Where do your lyrics come from? Experiences. Where do your lyrics come from? <laughs> yes, you're right. Poetry and feeling from the soul. Okay. Pretty deep. Where do your lyrics come from? Mine? Yeah. Um, I mean, experiences, but also being completely honest, like uh, rephrasing a lot of things I've already heard in my own way. Like, not like what he say, like write it down word for word, but. Now I got it. I'm going to change this letter. Yeah. Right. Like it that. Anybody else? Who else writes? Where do your lyrics come from? Eminem. You're hard. Oh, Eminem. <laughs> Eminem. All right. I don't care if you're writing country songs, you're writing punk rock songs, you're writing folky tunes, if you're writing death metal. No matter what you're writing, those words are floating all around you at all times. Some of them are internalized, some of them are out there. 